All right, this is Dan with Birding's Jewelry, just trying to uh, do a little bit of a video about two of the most sought after uh, Grand Seiko watches. One, the uh, Peacock. It's well known because of its dial, uh, that it was actually inspired by the iridescent feathers of a peacock. Then the Snowflake. Now this is probably the most sought after watch, or, or one of the most sought after watches by uh, forum people. Uh, as well as watch enthusiasts everywhere. So these are two watches that we're going to be kind of comparing and contrasting today. So basically what kind of uh, makes, uh, sets these two uh, apart. Uh, so essentially what you have here with the, with the Peacock is the, their uh, high beat 36,000 uh, uh, movement. It basically is a traditional automatic movement uh, with a 36,000 VPH um, uh, movement. So it's very, it's very similar to the uh, Zenith El Primero Espada movement. That's uh, kind of the best analog that you're going to find on the uh, mainstream uh, Swiss Swiss uh, watch market today uh, to this watch. And then obviously the Spring Drive really has no uh, other analog. It's very kind of in its own market just because really it's a uh, it's kind of like a automatic watch that is um, kind of regulated by a quartz movement. So I know that's, that's kind of butchering it, but uh, in essence what you have is a automatic watch and all what makes an automatic watch beautiful in terms of the um, hand making uh, quality. You have the, the display back, which you cannot see right now just because I have all the pricing and all the stickers and that kind of thing on it. But, hold on, give me a second here. You have everything that you get with an automatic watch, the beautiful craftsmanship, as well as the nice display back with the uh, counterbalance. As well, if you look at closely at the actual movement here, that sweeping nice second hand, focus the camera here, is thanks is thanks in large part, there it is, to uh, this, there's electron actually bouncing back and forth, kind of like a quartz movement, uh, in order to make sure that it's oscillating and timing it properly. So what you have is a sweeping second hand that a lot of uh, automatic watch enthusiasts love about automatic watches, except it's truly sweeping. Unlike automatic watches, like the Peacock here, where no matter how high the VPH is, there is still the slightest tick. So like a traditional uh, automatic watch is, you know, I think what, 21,400 uh, or something like that, four or 500 um, VPH. This is 36,000, so you, get, you do get a better, uh, nicer, sweeping second hand. If you look at like a Rolex or something like that that's just running about 21,000 VPH, you do have a little bit of a, a more of a kind of a hacking um, uh, movement to it. Uh, so you actually see a little bit more of that tick. Uh, but with, with the actual um, spring drive, it is truly sweeping. Make setting it apart from everyone else on the market. So I think the video might be able to better pick that up. Then you actually can see it. So if it was all on its own, listen, the high V is going to do its job, and it's going to be uh, it's going to be sweeping uh, much better than a lot of other watches on the market today. But this uh, compare the two, and you see pretty clearly which one's ticking and which one's not. 
that's what the that's what people go crazy about the spring drive for. Really, uh, really sets itself apart from the rest. Um, now, people may call it uh, try to take something away from it, calling it a quartz movement. It is obviously not a quartz movement, as you can see. It's got a power reserve. Why is that? Because it actually is, uh, you know, it is tied to a counterbalance. Let's see if I can. There. Just like the high beat is. But the high beat, and you can kind of see the mainspring going back and forth there. It's just like any other watch. Just like the Zenith El Primero Espada, except the Dux really does have a stop seconds function. These are very uh, high quality watches. Especially when you kind of compare them to their direct competition from Rolex and the like. So re these are really cool watches. Now, one thing uh, is why they call this the actual peacock, why they call this the snowflake. It's like I said, this is supposed to be uh, inspired by the iridescent feathers on a, a peacock. Um, I will have to say that, that this thing, that the peacock dial is looks more like a, a green spiral drawing when you were a kid. <laughs> it is iridescent. It is very beautiful. Um, but the... Uh, let's see if I can get this properly. The actual um, pattern on it, kind of carbon fibery, um, you know, like I said, it's kind of spiraling. Uh, it's, it's really cool. I'm not sure if I would have called this a peacock, but then again, why the heck do you call a Rolex Batman a Batman? Meanwhile, with the snowflake, you pretty much know right when you look at it, it looks like snow. It's this uh, nice snowy papyrusy thing that's kind of going on with it. Uh, <laughs> that's, uh, I'm losing pretty uh, big words here, but hey. I use the best words. So <laughs> um, this is actually a very though, attractive watch and uh, one that uh, you know even I wouldn't have mind having my wrist. But compare the two. Obviously, you are the uh, you're the person who's going to have to do that for yourself. But these uh, two watches uh, would make a, a great. Um, addition to anyone's watch box. Now, that said, what kind of sets them apart is the fact that the Grand Seiko um, uh, High Beat is really a GMT here, so it's kind of a, it's kind of like a less expensive Explorer II Rolex, and it's really what is it about two thousand bucks less? I want to say. So this makes it a, a great um, great value, in addition to ha it having kind of the uh, high beat 36,000 movement. So uh, kind of what sets this 36,000 movement apart from say like the Zenith El Primero Espada, like I said, the Espada when you set it doesn't have the stop seconds function. So if you want to set that watch, um, you can't really like uh, synchronize it to the second kind of like uh, we did here. So, you know, if, if you are very uh, crazy about having your watches be exact, you know, good luck with that with the uh, Zenith, or Zenith, sorry. Can I do that? Apologize, it's a Zenith helper mail. So, with the uh, Snowflake, you have the Spring Drive. Spring Drive is kind of, like I said, it's a movement on its own, but really the only function that it has is it's got the date function as well as the, um, as well as the uh, power reserve. Now I will say, and I've said it before, I said it again. Power reserve is uh, doesn't get any respect because it is such a useful um, complication on a watch, especially if you wear a lot of watches. You have several in your watch box. You kind of have to pick and choose which one you're going to wear, which one is dead, and which one's not. This one will actually tell you. High beat does not. So you have to kind of decide for yourself. Which would I rather have, 
Do you want the spring drive or do you want that extra hand and the uh, high beat? So that's really kind of what's going on with two of the most highly sought after uh, Grand Seikos on the market today. Now I could tell you about the, the Zaratsu polishing. Sorry about this, I didn't really shine these up properly. But this thing is really, you can kind of, oh there we go, that's a good shot. So you can actually see yourself in this polishing. Now a lot of cases, a lot of these high-end watches are very shiny. Shiny they are, but mirror-like they are not. This, these watches, the Zeratsu polishing was inspired by the Japanese katana and it's basically metal on metal polishing and what's going on with this is you really do get a mirror finish. So much so, so much so that it, and it's so shiny that you actually kind of start to think boy something's off. You know a lot of other watches out there have that nice shininess to it like a lot of Rolexes, Jaegers, that kind of thing. They'll actually uh, look shiny then you kind of look at try to look at yourself in the mirror maybe do your hair on it and uh, good luck with that but these guys boy you can really see there you, go. you kind of see how bald I am <laughs> uh, but you can really see how great this construction is so you really see uh, look at these two watches why Grand Seiko's are so well respected with watch people average people who don't know what the heck they're talking about like oh why are you wearing a Seiko you know why'd you pay so much for a Seiko well it's not just a Seiko it's a grand Seiko it has better finishing than any other uh, watch on the market the movements are comparable to everyone on the market why not give it a shot and you really can you really should at least once especially with one of these two because these dials are experiences to behold. This is Dan with Brilliance, signing off.